solemn duty to the Jamaican people. He has known since May 2023 that he was under investigation for illicit enrichment, which is a corruption offense created by Section 14.5 of the Corruption Prevention Act. Yes, Mr. Holness is one of the illicit six, now the illicit eight, and he has known this for well over a year. Yet Mr. Holness misled the country by withholding the truth about this investigation. In statements that he made both in and outside parliament over this period, even telling Jamaica that he had asked far and wide and none of his MPs were under investigation for illicit enrichment. This extended withholding of the truth, this fundamentally dishonest deception of the people of Jamaica obliterates any trust and confidence in the Prime Minister. How can we believe anything, he says, in light of the extended failure to tell us the truth that he was indeed under investigation for a serious criminal offence? This unprecedented situation is fundamentally incompatible with his continuing to hold office as Prime Minister. The Integrity Commission's report contains several serious findings which reinforce the need for Mr. Holness to go now. I will mention three of these. Firstly, there is the purchase of an investment for 94,000 US dollars using as part of the money that was put up to buy this investment, 32,000 US dollars from a registered charity of which Mr. Holness is a director called the Positive Jamaica Foundation, who mingled with resources from his personal company, Imperium, including 30,000 US dollars from an account that he had with SSL. Yes, SSL. Mr. Holness reported this investment for several years as 100% belonging to his company, Imperium, when the charity's money had been used to acquire it as well as his own. Indeed, a third of the money came from the charity. One can only wonder how local and international donors to that charity feel about its resources being used to enrich Mr. Holness personally. Secondly, the filing of nil returns by Mr. Holness's personal companies, nil tax returns, indicating that they had no taxable income or expenses when the companies did in fact have substantial income and expenses is a matter which the Integrity Commission suggests could be a significant violation under Jamaica's tax laws and should be referred to the Commissioner General of Tax Administration Jamaica for action. Indeed, the payments between Mr. Holness's personal companies over the review period exceeded $400 million. Then there's the creation of a situation of conflict of interest by Mr. Holness appointing his business partner and co-investor in his personal real estate company, Mr. Norman Brown, to be chairman of two important public bodies, the Urban Development Corporation, UDC, and the Housing Association of Jamaica, HAJA, both of which fall under Mr. Holness's portfolio responsibility as minister, and both of which operate in the real estate sector. Mr. Holness has placed Jamaica, our beloved country, and our cherished democracy in a dangerous and untenable situation. 
his integrity issues cannot be resolved, partly because of the baffling complexity of his personal financial affairs. He operated no less than 28 bank accounts, 28. His three personal companies were involved in a very high volume of transactions, averaging over four per banking day during the period of review, including many substantial intercompany payments and including over four and a half million dollars of so-called cardless cash deposits made over a three month period into his bank account by depositors whose identity remains unknown to the commission. And partly the matter is unresolved because Mr. Holness's own refusal to provide information about aspects of his affairs, which was requested by the Integrity Commission for the purposes of their investigation. The Prime Minister therefore remains the subject of an incomplete investigation for illicit enrichment, as the Integrity Commission has been unable to conclude its investigation in part because of Mr. Holness refusing to provide them with critical information that they need to do so. The Integrity Commission has recommended that the case be referred to the Financial Investigations Division, the FID, which specializes in financial crimes, including money laundering, and with which the Integrity Commission has an active Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, for mutual cooperation, which is provided for in Section 12, sorry, Section 7, Subsection 12 of the Integrity Commission Act, and also by an equivalent provision in the FID Act as well. This is, referral is recommended so that further investigation can get to the bottom of his affairs. And the Integrity Commission has also made it clear that Mr. Holness's statutory declarations cannot and will not be certified as required by law until the investigations have been concluded. So, Jamaica has a Prime Minister who remains under investigation for the serious corruption offence of illicit enrichment and whose annual statutory declarations for 2021 onwards still cannot be certified by the country's Integrity Commission as required by law. This is a serious blot on the country's image, both locally and internationally. It is untenable for our Prime Minister not to be in good standing with the country's Integrity Commission. We cannot go on like this. The Prime Minister must step aside now or call fresh elections so that the people have the chance to elect a new government that can take our country out of this mess. Finally, it is important to dispel the deliberate false falsehood that is being perpetrated in some circles of the Integrity Commission being motivated by political bias. While the developmental work on the legislation that created the Integrity Commission was done prior to 2016, the Integrity Commission Act was reviewed and then passed into law by this JLP government. The commissioners of the Integrity Commission were appointed under this JLP government, and Mr. Holness himself had an important role in their appointment. The staff of the Integrity Commission were all employed under this JLP government. The record shows that the Integrity Commission has taken action against delinquent representatives from both political parties. This scurrilous suggestion that the Integrity Commission is motivated by political bias must therefore be rejected for the malignant mischief that it is. The Integrity Commission is a critical institution in the governance of our country country which is seriously afflicted by the scourge of corruption at the highest levels. 
the Integrity Commission must be nurtured and supported so that it, it can do its anti-corruption work without fear or favor. The continuing attempts to discredit, weaken, undermine, or intimidate the Integrity Commission, its commissioners and staff must be condemned and resolutely resisted by all well-thinking Jamaicans. Thank you. I just want to close briefly by saying in relation to the incident that we heard about through the news last night concerning the homelessness in their home, that we absolutely abhor any such conduct. We call upon the security forces, law enforcement, to investigate it thoroughly, and if there are any perpetrators, to bring them to justice. And I want to extend my personal sympathies to Mr. and Mrs. Holness and their family. Thank you.